Hi everyone. In this video, we will talk about something which was introduced way back in 1961. And even after 59 years since inception, it is still a topic which most of us, many of us, still fail to understand or interpret. Yes, I am talking about the income tax law in India. As always, my intention in this video is to make things extremely clear. and therefore i'll break down the entire concept of income tax into smaller parts and smaller divisions and then try to understand this with more details but with less numbers so i have for you some faqs of frequently asked questions from a common man's perspective or a common man's point of view and throughout the course of this entire video i'll be touching upon each of these faqs such as what exactly is income tax what are the five heads under which you can earn your income and then be subject to income tax what are the various deductions from gross total income or in other words how do you plan to save taxes what are the various ways or mechanism in which the government wants you to remit income tax and then a hot topic that is income tax labs pre budget and post budget 2020 and to finally end the story with a very important question as to whether you have to file your income tax return what are the advantages of you filing one and what are the dis- uh, consequences of you not filing one But before we do a deep dive into each of these FAQs, it's very important for us to make our foundation solid, and therefore we start from the basics. No doubt, it's a well-known fact that the biggest source of revenue for the government is through taxes. In today's world, there's a tax on everything that you do, be it the salary income that you get, the food that you have at restaurants, the movies that you watch on Netflix. the toll that you pay through fast tag and why not even on the packet of biscuits that you've just bought from the nearby store so there's always some sort of tax embedded into the final price of goods and services and therefore you pay, you end up paying different types of taxes in different forms now taxes in india can be broadly classified into two direct tax and indirect tax direct tax is a tax that you pay on the income that you earn in a particular financial year here you do not pass on the burden to any other person because you are paying taxes to the government from your own hands indirect tax on the other hand is a tax that is embedded into the final price of goods and services that you purchase or buy from the supplier so the price that you pay for the goods and services already includes a tax component which the supplier collects and then he pays to the government so in this the government is indirectly collecting tax from your hands so income tax which is the focal point of a discussion is classified under the category of direct tax because it is basically a tax that you pay on the income that you earn in a particular year from different sources and to understand the sources we will now move on to the different heads of income under which you can show the income that you have earned and then be subject to income tax at the time when you file your income tax return the government requires you to disclose the category or the head under which you have earned your income during a particular year and for that very reason there are five heads of income specified in the income tax law so the most common source of income is income from the head salary and this includes uh, basic pay all kinds of general special allowances the perquisites that you get the leave encashment the gratuity and even pension that you receive after retiring from your job so all this is kind of clubbed into one category and the net salary is shown under this head income from profession or business Well you must be doing a business in your personal capacity or in capacity with your family friends and peers and the net income that you get from your business or profession is shown under this head mind you it is the net income and not the total sales or the gross sales from your business and profession which is to be shown here coming to income from house property well some of us may have two house properties one of course in which we permanently reside and the other one we would have let out to some party The income that we receive from the let out house property in the form of rent is again subject to income tax and needs to be disclosed under the head income from house property. But what about the sale of capital asset? Be it land, building, a second hand car, jewelry in terms of gold. Well, the income from the sale of these capital assets needs to be disclosed under the head income from capital gains. Mind you again, it is not the selling price of these capital assets sold. but it is the profit selling price minus cost price the profit that needs to be showed under this head income from capital gains and then you have the fifth source of income which is called income from other sources or the miscellaneous category 
So this includes those incomes which could not be categorized into the other four heads which will come into income from other sources. Here you have income in the form of interest from the FD that you opened with the bank. In terms of dividend income that you received from the shares that you invested in a particular company. Or it could be in terms of the returns that you get from investments made in mutual funds or any other lucrative investments. The main reason why you have five different heads of income in your income tax return is because under each such head you have specific computations and specific deductions. For example, in the case of your salary income, you have a standard deduction of 50,000 applicable from financial year 1920 onwards. In the case of income from house property, you again have a standard deduction of 30%. As you can see in this graph, on the left side, I have shown all the heads of income. Now some of us, in fact most of us will have income from multiple sources. So you need to club all these incomes and then show it as your gross total income. And then you can take the benefit of something known as deductions from gross total income to arrive at the net total income on which income tax is chargeable. Now this area is something of great interest to all of us for the fact that the government has given many investment options through which on one hand we'll be able to earn a fixed percentage of income and on the other hand we can take these investments that we make to be as deductions from gross total income and obviously end up paying less amount of taxes. A well-known section in the Income Tax Act is Section ATC which entails a list of various investments provided by the government which you can make use of and claim deductions from gross total income. Some of them include payment made towards the life insurance premiums of yourself, your spouse or your children. The payment of the principal component of a housing loan. The expenses incurred towards tuition fees of your children's education at school or college and even contributions to public provident fund. Coming outside of ATC, there are several other payments which if you can make then you can claim deductions from gross total income. These include payment made towards the medical claim insurance premiums of yourself, your spouse or your parents and even the interest component on the education loan taken for your child's higher education is subject to deduction. Now investments can also be in the form of donations that you make to a charitable organization or a religious trust or some sort of relief fund. So if at all you made a contribution to the PM Cash Fund or the Kerala Chief Minister's Relief Fund, then please remember that this donation that you've made can be availed as a deduction from the gross total income and thereby you can end up paying less amount of taxes to the government. One more point that I would like to bring up here is the need for all of us to understand the main difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. Tax avoidance means you are planning to reduce your taxes within the four corners of the law, which means it's legal. And tax planning is the practice or the process of tax avoidance. Tax evasion on the other hand is when you go beyond the four corners of the law and you try to save or avoid taxes through illegal means. So tax avoidance or tax planning is recommendatory but tax evasion is illegal. Now if you observe the bottom right of this graph you will understand that the government wants you to remit income tax chargeable on the net total income in three modes as advanced tax, as TDS or TCS and as self-assessment tax. Let's try to understand these three modes in detail. First, let's start with the concept of TDS or tax deducted at source. Now TDS is that portion of income tax that you have to pay to the government on all payments made for services. For example, when your employer is making a payment of salary to you, he will be liable to deduct some percentage from your salary and pay as income tax to the government. Now TDS is attracted on almost all kinds of payments that you make, be it to contractors, be it to brokers, be it to consultants and even non-residents residing abroad. All of them attracts TDS. TCS on the other hand is tax collected at source something which the seller collects when he sells the goods to the buyer. For example, a car dealer is making a fresh sale of a car to a customer. It is responsibility of the car dealer to collect TCS from the customer and then pay to the government. Yes, it follows the concept of indirect taxes, but it is very much classified under direct taxes. Now coming to advanced tax, 
This was a concept brought out by the government to reduce the burden for both the normal taxpayer as well as for the government itself. Instead of paying taxes on a lump sum basis at the year end when you receive your income, the government is asking you to estimate how much of income you will earn in a particular year, calculate the estimated income tax liability and pay that income tax in advance in quarterly installments. So the government has provided uh, timelines quarterly starting from 15th of June right up to 15th of March, starting from 15% of the estimated income tax liability right up to 100% of the same by 15th March. A normal salaried individual will not have to pay advance tax because when he received a salary, the employee would have already deducted TDS under section 192 and pay to the government. Moving on to the concept of self-assessment tax. Now sometimes what happens is your estimation of total income may not be correct and you may end up receiving more income than what you estimated which in that case your uh, total tax liability will of course be higher and you will have to pay something called a self-assessment tax even if you have paid advanced tax and TDS. Well an important point to note here is the fact that self-assessment tax needs to be paid before you file your return of income. Now the final step in this process is to compute your tax liability, determine how much of self-assessment tax you need to pay in addition to advanced tax in TDS and finally file your income tax return. To understand the existing income tax slabs prescribed by the government, let's take the help of an example. Imagine you're doing pretty good in life. Sitting at the tender age of 55, you're already earning 40 lakhs per annum. Your income tax that you have to pay to the government looks something like this. Up to the first 2 lakh 50 thousand, you, you do not have to pay any sort of tax, which means that 2 lakh 50 thousand is the basic exemption limit. For the next 2 lakh 50 thousand, you have to pay at 5%. For the next 5 lakh, you have to pay 20%. And for anything above 10 lakhs, it attracts a flat 30%. In addition to this, you have to pay something called as the higher education cess, which is at 4% and your total tax liability works out to 10,51,000 something. So which basically means that 40 lakhs that you earn in a particular year, out of which 10.5 lakhs you'll have to shell out as tax to the government. The biggest announcement in the budget speech of 2020 was the new income tax labs. The finance minister said that the new income tax labs would be applicable from financial year 2021 onwards and this would be optional which means you can still continue to stick on to the old income tax slabs as discussed before or shift to the new income tax slabs. The USP or the unique selling proposition of this new tax regime is the fact that now you will have to pay taxes at lower rates depending upon the income slabs under which your income comes and sits. But the catch here is that you'll have to give up your deductions from gross total income which means even if you make investments under section ATC or ATD or in any other investments provided by the government you cannot claim those investments made as deductions from gross total income. The due dates for filing the income tax return for financial year 2019-20 was 31st of July 2020 but that has been extended to 30th November 2020 for both individuals as well as for companies. Even if your total income does not exceed the basic exemption limits of 2,50,000 if you are 60 years and below, 3 lakhs if you are 80 years and below and 5 lakhs if you are 80 and above, still it is recommended that you file an income tax return. Because filing a return brings with it a lot of benefits and advantages. Processing of a education or home loan becomes much faster with banks. Visa processing becomes easier with embassies. And the registration of immobile properties in most states require your income tax returns for the last three years. But if your total income exceeds these basic exemption limits and you miss out on filing an income tax return, then the government says that you have breached your duty on filing a return and a penalty will be imposed on you starting with a minimum of 5,000 rupees, which may eventually lead to an income tax assessment in your case. And the fact is that once you are in the radar of the income tax department, it's practically very difficult to get out of it. Well, I hope I was able to make things clear and interesting through this video. If you like the video, please do show your support to us by hitting that like button. 
If you want to become a member of this channel and receive notifications by way of videos on income tax or any other topics, please do subscribe to the channel so that you receive videos on a weekly basis. And once you subscribe, you have this little bell icon on the side which you can tap for notifications to receive faster. I've also given a link to the previous video on the petrol diesel hike. If you're interested in knowing more about it, please uh, click on the link. I would love suggestions coming in for the video by way of comments. And I've also given my email ID below in case you want to get back to me for doubts on the topics discussed in this video. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, it's a thank you from my side. Stay safe and have a great day.